Hello my friends, today we are continuing with our mini series of backyard birding and we will edit this image over here and turn it into hopefully something like this. I edited this a few days ago and to be honest when I did edit it I used Lightroom and Photoshop but today we will try to get the same result using uh, Luminar Neo and maybe finish it off in Photoshop. So let's see, this image, I took it with my A1 200-600mm to lens, shutter speed was 1 3 20 of a second, um, I have f6.3, it was handheld and ISO 1 800. Because I have a higher ISO, I do like to take this image first into topaz denoise to remove the noise, so we will start with that. I'll go to photo, edit in topaz denoise. As I said in the previous episode, this really is the best way to remove noise in your images. Really easy, you don't need to know much about the program, just with one click you can remove the noise. So topaz denoise is opening and as you can see, I'm going to move it 200% so you can see what's happening in here. You see this is our before with the noise and this is the after. You see before and after, before and after. And we're not losing any detail on the bird. So I like to keep mine on standard, remove noise and enhance sharpness, keep both at 15. And that seems to work perfectly for me for 99% of my images. So we'll let that process remove all the noise and then we will move into Luminar Neo. And there you go, now we have our noise-free image. And before I move it to Luminar Neo, I do like to apply a crop to it. I will do an 8x10 for this image. And let's see. I like to put the eye on the rule of thirds. And I think something like that will work pretty well. Let's see, something like that. Great. And now we will go to photo, edit in, and Luminar Neo. Now we have our image opened into Luminar Neo, so I will go to edit and start with some develop edits. We will add a little bit of exposure as it's underexposed. Um, I'm gonna open up the shadows and then I'll go to black and white and raise up the whites quite a bit something like that and maybe bring down the blacks just a tiny little bit great we are doing great i want to brighten the bird just a little bit more so i'll go back into the develop increase the exposure and i'm just going to paint this onto the bird maybe something like that let's go on the tail a little bit too because the tail is part of the bird as well and I'm trying to stay away from the edges so I don't get weird haloing or anything too strange. Great. Now the bird is standing out. Let's see, this is our before and after, before and after. The whole image so far, this is our before and after, before and after. The bird does have some orange into it. So I like to go to the colors and bring out those oranges a little bit. I'll go to HSL. I am going to go to saturation and increase the orange saturation. I'll increase it quite a bit, something like that. And I really like what it does that on the bird. This is the before and after, before and bar after. The head, it's a little bit too saturated. So I will take the eraser tool maybe at 50% and just erase this part 50% so it's not oversaturated on the head. And now this is our before. This is the after, before and after. And I really liked what that did. Now, when it comes to wildlife photos, the eye of the subject is the most important. So I usually like to go and bring it up a little bit. I will increase the exposure. I will increase the whites and take down the blacks a little bit. And that will usually brighten it up and bring up some contrast. And I will paint this just on the eye something like this and now this is the before and after before and after just brings a little bit of life into the eye great the bird is looking great let's see again this is the before and after 
Now, if you know me by now and you've been following me for a while, you will know I'm not a fan of this kind of yellow, limey green. So I would like to change that and I will do that using the color panel. Onto the color panel, I will go to my hue and I will change these greens towards a little bit more cyan. And then I will go to the saturation, bring down the saturation of the greens. And then the luminance, I will maybe bring it down. Not too much, I do not want to get much bending, so I will stay with that. And this is the before and after, before and after so far. And that looks pretty good right now on Luminar Neo. Let's move on. I will apply this and it will take me back to Lightroom. And then see what other edits we can go from there. So now we are back in Lightroom. This is what our image looked before we left Lightroom. And this is after the Luminar Neo adjustments. And now I want to take it in Photoshop just because I want to add some blue to the background because blue against orange looks really nice. So let's go do that. I'll do Command E and this will send my image into Photoshop. And now that we are in Photoshop, I always like to start by doing Command J to duplicate my background. That way I will work non-destructively. And what I want to do is add a gradient I will add a radial gradient and I like to start in the center with kind of a beigey color, almost white but not quiet, something like that. And then for uh, the outside of my gradient, I will go with the blue. Let's see, something pretty medium blue, something like that. And I'll make sure the opacity of my blue, it is 100%. Let's not do it 100, maybe we'll go something like 70s. Click OK and OK again. Now we can double click on our gradient and now we can move it. So I will put this lighter color right where the bird is and maybe make the gradient a little bit bigger. Something like that looks good to me, click OK. I will turn off my gradient and I'll go back to my background image. And now with the quick selection tool, I will just click on select subject. Photoshop will do its best to select the subject. It doesn't always do a great job, but you know, we can adjust it. So I will just, it missed some part of the branches here. So I will adjust that really quick. I'm not going to try to be too precise. Something like that. And then once we have this selected, I apologize for my dog. She is barking because my kids are outside and she wants to go out and play. Select and mask. And with the refine brush Z to go to the zoom and I'll click 100%. And with the refine mask, I'm just going to go just around the edges of the bird. Just to better make a selection so it doesn't look too rough. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be good enough for this example. And we will call that good. Let's see. Command zero to fit the screen. And I will select it onto a new layer with the layer mask. Click OK. Great. I'll turn on my radial gradient and I'll turn off my selection layer and now I'll just copy this mask by holding option and I'll bring it up and now we have it up to the top and we have to make sure we inverse it command I and now the bird is in front of the gradient now you can see where our selection was not perfect but that is okay because we will not keep the blending mode to normal we will move it into soft light and then we'll reduce the opacity and I'll just make things blend a little bit better. So we will not see those parts that are messed up. So let's see before. This is before and after. Before and after. So it's looking better already. Now I will use the same gradient. I'll do Command J. And this time I will change the blending mode maybe to multiply and reduce the opacity to something like 32% and this is the before and after this one, before and after. 
And now I will duplicate this layer one more time, Command J, and this time maybe I'll leave it to normal. Increase the amount to probably 60s or so. But then I want to make sure I will delete this layer mask and I'll make a new layer mask. And this time I will just mask in the whole inside before the brush. I'll paint it black and I make sure I leave this blue just on the outer edge, just like a color vignette, basically. Something like that. So this is our before and after, before and after. I do not like this shade of blue over here. I kind of want to desaturate that. So I will make a hue saturation adjustment layer with this little hand tool. I'll click on it and select this shade of blue and then I'll make sure I desaturate that. Something like that. I think it looks better. So this is our before and after hue and saturation before and after. Let's see the image before we brought it into Photoshop. This is our before and after. We made it a lot more blue before and after, and I like that better. Now looking at the image, we still have this green here on the top and the bottom. I would like to neutralize that a little bit, get it more towards blue. So for that, I will make a hue and saturation uh, layer. And with the hand tool, I will pick this green and just move it a little bit towards blue. And there you go. This is our before and after, before and after. That looks a lot better. Now I will flatten my image. You can right click on the layer and flatten image. And then I will go to file and close and that will save it into Lightroom. And now when we go back into Lightroom, we have our image from Photoshop. So this is the image we started with in Lightroom, then we took it into Luminar Neo and turned it into this, and then in Photoshop we finished it into something like this. Now as always when I make these videos, I do go with edits a little bit further than I will normally go, just because I want you to really see the difference onto YouTube. So normally I will dial everything down a little bit. But I hope you learned something new and this was useful to you. Thank you so much for watching, my name is Skylar Ewing and I will see you in my next video.